I'd like to welcome you to the Lone Oak Fish Health Lab. Uh, we recently did obtain APHIS certification and we've been through one full season. So we wanted to invite you in now um, for an open house and a ribbon cutting ceremony. Um, I'm Rebecca Lockman and I'm the Interim Chair, Center Director for Aquaculture and Fisheries. Uh, and I'm going to start uh, by introducing Anita Kelly and she's the Interim Director of the Lone Oak Fish Health Lab and also the Associate Director of the Center. Thank you, Rebecca. I really appreciate everybody who um, has shown up today, and I'd like to recognize a few people that are in the crowd. It's probably going to be just about everybody that's here, but I would like to um, acknowledge them. First of all, I'd like to acknowledge um, Corsi Courtney Massey. She's right there. She's from the governor's office. Um, Charles Armstrong. There he is. And then um, Melissa Russ from the UA system, who is right here, as well as Ben Beaumont who's right next to her, okay. Um, I'd like to also recognize Andy Goodman, who is the Chief of Staff for the Senate, who is sitting there. And then we have Representatives Ferguson, Armstrong, Bennett, and I think that's it, right? Okay, I don't want to miss anybody. Uh, we have um, Judge uh, Irwin, who's back here, who is the Lono County Judge. Um, I'd like to acknowledge uh, Janet Broyles, who is the Chief of Staff uh, for the uh, Chancellor. Uh, Tony Windham is here from the Division of Ag. Um, Bob Scott, I would like to acknowledge you too. Um, we had a little mishap here and Bob and his team were able to get our air conditioning back on today. <laughs> Otherwise it could be a little warm in here. <laughs> I would also like to recognize um, um, our representative from the Lone Oak County office, and that is Diana Bowen, who's back there. He, she um, is our um, FCS uh, agent. Uh, the other uh, staff chair was not able to be here. He had somewhere else to be today. Um, I would like to also recognize um, the farmers that I see in the room. Um, we have Mike Clark from Central Arkansas Fisheries. We have um, Jeremy Wittenberg from Treadway. I have Neil. Anderson and Jamie Anderson from IF Andersons. I have Mike Freeze from Keo Fish Farm. Um, Eric Park, who's from Gentry and Canterbury, I believe. Um, I'm not missing anybody. Oh, there's Margie Saul. She's hanging out back there from Harry Saul's Men Farm, too. So um, I'd like to acknowledge all those people. And I, again, I, I can't thank you enough for coming today. Um, and I'm not going to introduce or acknowledge the people who are speaking today. So. Don't feel like you've been dissed, because I will introduce you as you come up here. Um, one of the things I did to get prepared for today was I decided that we would give kind of an overview of the lab and kind of how we got here. And I made an assumption that the Pine Bluff Lab was the original lab and that we sorted out from there. Um, but that's not true. Uh, looking back through the uh, different archives and things that we have, the Lone Oak Lab was the first lab that was developed for the fish farmers, and that was back in 1983. So we've been doing diagnostic services here for 33 years. Um, Larry uh, Dorman, actually, was the original one, and he is now down in Lake Village, which was the second lab, which was developed in 1988 to service the catfish farmers in that area. Um, and then... It was in 1992 that Pine Bluff actually hired their first pathologist to actually um, help out with some of the diagnoses that were going on up here in the Lone Oak Lab and down, or, and down in Lake Village. Um, and then it wasn't until 2001 that we actually um, got our fourth lab, which was originally in Newport and it's now in Jonesboro. Um, the one thing I want to point out is that the Lone Oak Lab and the Lake Village Lab originally started out in the county extension offices. Um, the Lone Oak Lab is the only one that remains, but we still have a very, very strong relationship with the 1869 Extension uh, folks, and that's really a good thing for us to have. Um, when I was going back and looking at, you know, how this all got started, um, back in 1995, there were some farmers, I guess, that wanted to send some fish overseas. And so there were certain protocols that the Animal Plant Health Inspection Service, or part of the USDA, decided that needed to be taken care of and um, you had to have your fish certified that these your fish you were sending didn't have these diseases. So they started sending some of these things to the lab in Pine Bluff to get um, approval for that. And I believe, 
Dr. Park was very instrumental in some of the original stuff that started here. He used to work for Extension um, in my position, I think, up here in Lone Oak. Um, and this was really, really important that the farmers started to do this because back in 2002, there was an outbreak of spring viremia of carp out on the East Coast that was actually identified by our then pathologist, Andy Goodwin. Um, and those fish were actually goldfish, and the people in North Carolina were trying to say, well, those goldfish came from Arkansas. Well, fortunately, because they had set up this program where they were looking at fish, they could come back and they had years of records to show that they had been looking for this particular virus and it was not present in Arkansas. And so we were able to continue to ship fish elsewhere throughout the country and um, internationally. The diagnostic or the APHIS inspection lab, and I want to do a little difference between diagnostic and inspection because they're kind of synergistic but not really. The diagnostic labs, basically when farmers have problems with fish, they will bring their fish in in a water sample and we'll take a look at it to see if we can figure out what's going on. Normally it's a parasite infection or it might be a bacterial infection or it might be a water quality problem. And then we can tell them what's going on and you know give them some recommendations as to what they can do to correct that particular um, incidence. An inspection program is a program where farmers submit a certain number of fish to the laboratory and those are checked for what we call OIE diseases. Now, OIE is similar to the CDC for humans. In other words, they're going to look for those diseases that could be really devastating to other fish producers throughout the world. And so when they bring those fish in, we look for those particular viruses that are listed in OIE, and we are then able to send that paperwork to APHIS. Now, APHIS started a program where they actually were looking at protocols of labs, and then we get the designation APHIS approved lab. Once they approve your protocols and come in and look at your lab and make sure you have the appropriate uh, equipment and stuff there to be able to conduct the assays. Um, actually, the one in Pine Bluff received their first certification actually in 2009, which was about the time that APHIS came about with this particular program. And then of course we got our second lab up here in Lone Oak in 2015. Um, in 2005, and kind of as a result of this spring viremia of carp outbreak, um, our fish producers were very proactive and they actually went to the legislature to be able to get a program put in place that was a kind of a third party type of program where they would submit their fish for sampling, they paid a fee for that, and this particular program then is overseen by, right now by the state plant board. And the legislature in 2005 approved the Arkansas Baitfish Certification Program, which is one of a kind in the nation. And the particular system that we use for this um, laboratory here and for even our diagnostics um, is actually the model that's used by a lot of other states uh, for fish being transferred either from one state to another. Now, as we all know, states are independent and each state has their own regulation. And so we have to be very, very careful of what particular um, tests that we do perform on fish to enable the farmers to be able to ship both from state to state or internationally. And um, that was kind of the, the um, history of the lab, and it was kind of a little unique type of thing that I, I didn't realize had been there. And with that, I'm going to um, kind of turn over the um, microphone here, and the first person I would like to introduce, I really probably doesn't need any introduction, is um, Dr. Lawrence Alexander, who is the current Chancellor of UAPB. And um, he's going to come up here and give a few remarks. Um, and he's been very supportive of this lab in Lone Oak uh, being established. Um, we were able to get some funding through not only Dr. Alexander, but also Dr. Buckner and Rebecca Lockman um, out of funds that we had for for different projects and things like that. So with that, I would like to introduce Dr. Alexander. Excuse me. Thank you, Dr. Kelly. Thank you for that introduction, and thank you for uh, uh, that overview, which, which gives us some real good perspective on how we got to where we are today. Uh, and this, uh, it's good to see you all in Lone Oak. It's good to be in Lone Oak, and this is a great day uh, in Lone Oak, Arkansas. I'm glad to greet you on this uh, auspicious occasion. Uh, it is the opening of the 
um, the APHIS Certified Fish Inspection Lab at Lone Oak. Uh, we are delighted to have you join us today for this is a day of pride, this is a day of promise, and this is a day of prosperity for the Golden Lion Nation at the University of Arkansas at Pine Bluff. We are thankful that this day has finally arrived. After months of hard work and dedication, and there are many who have contributed to this day in one way or another. The long list includes Governor Hutchinson, members of the General Assembly, other state officials, many who assisted us in getting additional land-grant matching funds. Specifically, uh, we're pleased to have with us today Senate Pro Tem President uh, Dismang, Representative Bennett, Secretary Ward is here with us this morning, and you've heard the introductions. We've got our delegation and uh, 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 with us, uh, uh, Representative Armstrong and uh, and uh, uh, Representative Ferguson. I hope I, I, I hate to call names because I'll start missing people, but uh, but 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 I do want to recognize them because of their strong support for us and for what we're doing here. Thanks as well to the planning committee for this event, and the planning committee <coughs> included. Uh, uh, governmental affairs leaders, uh, John Kirkendall and Melissa Russ. Everybody here who was on a planning committee, if you just raise your hand. Let me just see those who planned this, helped plan this event. Representative Bennett, go on, take a little credit, give them a round of applause. <laughs> <laughs> we also would like to recognize those who worked in the trenches uh, at the university to get some things done, including our provost and vice chancellor for academic affairs, Dr. Jacqueline McCray who could not be here today, but I talked with her this morning. She so much wanted to be here. Uh, uh, Interim Dean of the School of Agriculture, Fisheries, and Human Sciences, uh, Buckner, Dean, uh, Ed Buckner. Interim Aquaculture Chair and Center Director, Dr. Rebecca Lockman, uh, for all of the contributions that they made in making this day possible. We especially acknowledge and thank Dr. Anita Kelly for her leadership in coordinating the APHIS certification process and in directing the unit. She has been on the team at UAPB for some eight years and was the obvious person to bring this moment to fruition. We greatly appreciate the time and effort and work that you put into enabling us to have this certified lab here. Uh, let me pause and, and thank as well uh, uh, somebody I just met today, and that's Miss Sharon High. I'm going to thank you, Miss High, because she has worked here for 42 years and is retiring this year from the university. So thank you very much. Thank you, Miss High. Last but certainly not least, we thank our partners in the industry, the industry in which we serve. People like the Andersons, the Sauls, the Friezes, the Parks, and many others. The opening of this lab is a reaffirmation of our commitment to support and assist the growers in the state of Arkansas in bringing their products to market. It is but one strand of the general mission of land-grant universities like UAPB, for we are committed as well to teaching, research, and service to our state. But our extension efforts at the lab, combined with the overall land-grant mission of the university, enables us to proudly contribute to the prosperity of our state through enhancing the economic development and economic growth of this sector of the state's top industry. Once again, thank you, and we thank you all for joining us on this special day. Thank you, Dr. Alexander. He mentioned uh, Senator Jonathan Dismang, who is the President Pro Tem of the Senate, and he's going to come up and give a few enlightening words, I'm sure. <laughs> what she meant to say was brief. I think that's the more important word. 
Uh, but just real quick, I, I mean, I, I'm going to repeat a lot of things or say a lot of things I think folks in the audience know, but I think it's good for the general public to understand. And that's really to focus on the importance of this facility because of the importance the aquaculture community has to our, you know, the state of Arkansas. That's a $160 million industry. We produced 80% of the U.S. bait fish here in Arkansas. And, and again, making sure that we have that APHIS certification and ability to ship those products, those fish out around the country and even the world, I think is, is critical to our community here and our ec economy here locally. And so again, we want to thank you for your service, appreciate the cooperation, and we all know that we, we, we still have some hurdles to move through. I don't think we should dodge those, pretend they don't exist, but, but we're going to be moving through those and we're going to get this thing to a resolution or continue to find resolution and make sure that we have the stability we need here for that aquaculture community. Uh, one thing I'd like to say in closing, this is a perfect example of that type of cooperation that we're looking for between rural Arkansas and our higher education community, and we thank you for that. Thank you all very much. The next person, too, I don't think needs any introduction, and that is the Secretary of Agriculture, Wes Ward, and he's going to come up here. He's given some really fine presentations in the past, so no pressure here. <laughs> so we're going to let him say a few words. Thank you. Well, Senator Dismang just stole half of what I was going to say, so mine will be brief as well. Uh, but just want to put this kind of in context of, uh, along the same lines of Senator Dismang's comments, of, of what this means for Arkansas. Uh, as the Chancellor mentioned, agriculture is our, our largest industry in the state of Arkansas. Uh, significant economic impact as far as uh, total economic contribution, a $20 billion industry, uh, 43,000 farm families, one out of every six jobs in the state are tied to agriculture and the aquaculture industry is a very important piece of that overall industry. Uh, when you look at uh, the aquaculture industry specifically, you know, Senator Dismain gave a couple of numbers. Uh, Arkansas has, has a lot to offer. And when you look at, and you look at that history, uh, ho hopefully nobody here is from, from Mississippi, but, but Arkansas, <laughs> Arkansas is the birthplace of warm water aquaculture. Sorry, Dr. Dr. Wyndham. Uh, but uh, we, we have a lot to be proud of for our, for our overall agriculture industry and a lot to be proud of with our aquaculture industry. So this is, this is great. Uh, we, we have great partnerships within the state. Our agriculture industry uh, is strong because people work together, whether that's uh, working with USDA, with APHIS, or, or working with, uh, with different commodity sectors or different growers. Uh, Arkansas is strong in, in large parts of our ability to work together, and you don't, you don't see that in other states. We have a lot to, to really be proud of. Uh, I do want to point out uh, Mark Stoll, who is our aquaculture program manager uh, at the Arkansas Ag Department. I know that most of you know him. Uh, he, is, he is dedicated to working with you and helping whichever way that he can and uh, helping to keep that industry strong. So thank you for letting us be here. Uh, thank you for your partnership with us. Thank you for letting us partner with you. Uh, and thank you for, for all of you for being here and showing just really just how important uh, this is for the aquaculture industry, but, but really for the state of Arkansas. So thank you again. The next person who's going to speak today actually started working for UAPD, I believe, in 1990. Four, and he was actually an extension specialist. Um, he, like I said previously, actually was very instrumental in getting a lot of the pathology programs up and running at, at UAPD. And now he is a, not only a producer, but he is, <clears throat> excuse me, president of the Arkansas Bait and Ornamental Fish Industry, um, Fish Growers Association. I'm sorry, I got that wrong. Um, and that is Dr. Eric Park. So Eric, if you'd like to come up and, and say a few brief words. <laughs> was that a yeah, Eric's a little bit more on the talkative side, but that's okay. <laughs> Brief by my definition might be different than yours. Um, no, but I just want to thank everybody for being here today. Uh, the aquaculture industry is important in Arkansas. It started roughly shortly after World War II, starting with the bait fish industry. That industry has grown throughout the years started right here in Lone Oak County and Prairie County next door. It grew to an industry that encompasses somewhere around, you heard um, Senator uh, Dismang mention 160 million farm gate. Well, the economic impact of that is about, has a multiplier of somewhere between seven and eight, which means that impact is somewhere around seven to nine hundred million dollars to the state. Bait fish making up about three hundred million of that. So this industry is important. One of the things that makes it so important is we don't really sell too many bait fish here in the state of Arkansas. They pretty much leave Arkansas. 
Six billion bait fish are produced every year in Arkansas, and they leave everywhere. They go, the bait fish themselves go to 39 states in this country, and the goldfish, the part that goes into the ornamental trade, goes to all 50. Our disease centers here are important to our industry. People don't often realize just how important it is. When you're in academia, you kind of get in that ivory tower and a little bit of separated from the reality of the world. What spurred us to have our certification program in 2005 that was approved in 2005 by the legislator, legislation was a breakout in 2001 back in North Carolina. That was mentioned earlier, but what wasn't mentioned was that that farm was quarantined within 24 hours of the diagnosis of the disease and quarantined for two years. Every last animal on that farm destroyed. Every state that had product that that farm was in, those fish were shut down and other farms that were in that state could not ship to other states due to guilt by association. That makes our certification program incredibly important. It's a voluntary program, but if somebody were to accidentally have a cross-contamination of something that shouldn't be there, no questions asked. These are internationally regulated diseases. It would shut down within 24 hours. By the time you figured it all out, the, biz the farm would be out of business. That's why this is so important. We need to not only have it here, but we need to make sure it continues to be properly staffed, properly funded, because the ramifications for a mistake are enormous. It would not only put the farm out of business that's negative, but at put at risk every other farm in the state. I'd like to thank all the legislators, the governors, senators, and representatives who helped us make this happen, all of those in the university that helped it make it happen. I hate to call anybody out by name, but I am going to call out uh, Representative Camille Bennett to thank her for kind of taking this charge and leading the charge for us. And um, that being said, I just want to again thank all of the bait fish farmers that have a multi-generational uh, program here, some of them three and four generations long. We are a vibrant industry continuing to grow and bringing prosperity to, uh, to this part of the state. Thank you very much. Um, now I'd like to call upon a couple of the um, fish producers just to kind of give you an idea of how valuable this particular lab and, and the services that we provide to them um, are. And uh, I'm going to pick on somebody here. Hey, Jamie, <laughs> would you mind coming up and, and, and saying a few words? This is Jamie Anderson. He is from IF Anderson um, Farms. Jamie Anderson, IF Anderson Farms. We, uh, fourth generation, uh, 1947 we began. Uh, loved to have a fifth generation. But a lot of that... Uh, a lot of that is on uh, rest on this uh, certification program. This lab, the staff, uh, last year we shipped fish into 40 different states. We deal with state agencies in all 40 of those states and we deal with federal agencies in many of those states. A lot of them are very good to work with. Some of them even will you know, let us know when things change and what's changed. Many of them do not. Um, we just kind of have to go you know, case to case, state to state. Um, we try our best not to get tripped up in any of those. Um, you know, and a lot of these states do not care. A lot of the people do not care that we talk to. A lot of them don't even know what the laws are. But it all starts here. It all starts with having our fish certified, having our certificates, having the plant board come out and look for invasive species, plants and animals. Um, as long as we've got a history of that, like everybody's mentioned before me, as long as we have a history of that, we're in pretty good shape. Um, but it is so crucial um, if something happened to, happened to this inspection um, in a spring or summer or fall when we're collecting our fish, if anything got tripped up, uh, it'd be multiple states that our farm alone would not be allowed to, be, to ship to. Um, some of our certification uh, deadlines may be you know, when the fish were harvested to, to be checked, some of them are January 1, some of them may be June 1st. You know, there's just a whole lot to keep up with. We have um, one to two people, including my father and I, who it's almost a full-time job. 
um, but all of that rides on this certification program, this lab, and the people who staff this lab. And um, I just can't stress to you how important it is uh, just for our farm alone and the industry uh, as a whole. I'm going to pick on one more person. Um, I'd like uh, Mr. Mike Fries to come up and say a few words. Uh, he not only runs, uh, is co-owner of Keo Fish Farms, but I believe he is the current president of the National Aquaculture Association as well. Thank you. I can't tell you how happy I am to be here today and how pleased I am with the progress that's been, been made here and the fact that we've got this lab certified and it's up and running. And you've heard everybody from uh, Eric and Jamie talk about how important it, it is to us. And, you know, as a farmer, we have to get our fish certified twice a year. And it's, if we miss one of those certifications or something happens, uh, some, there are some states, now not all of them, that we would be prohibited from shipping fish into them for at least a two-year period. So even if we don't, that's why cross the issue, as Jamie mentioned, or I think Eric, about cross-contamination is so important. And by having this lab here at Lone Oak, we feel like we're not, you know, this is, is, is uh, more centered around the fish farming industry and instead of just uh, research and fish farming. So it, it, it's, it's um, a positive for, for us that, that uh, you know, we feel like uh, our samples are, are being adequately processed, et cetera, and we don't have to have to worry about that. Are we going to be out of business for, for two years, or are we going to have to deal with a lot of federal agencies if there's some kind of a mistake or something? And so we're very, very pleased with everything that, that's been done, and, and I know the room is full of dignitaries, and we could sit here and, and thank everybody in here, but I, I do want to thank uh, uh, Chancellor Alexander. He has worked hard to make this happen. Uh, everything he has told us he would do, he has done. And Chancellor, we couldn't be more pleased. And I think you've, you've already heard, but we, we've got to keep this facility adequately adequately staffed. It's very important to us because we can't we can't miss a certification period if something something go, goes wrong. But we are. I think you'll find the industry is very very appreciative of everything everybody's done. And if nothing else, we just want to tell everybody in this room, thank you. <laughs>